Welcome back everybody. This is Eric and Chad here with Iraq Veteran 8888. Today we have another firearms fact uh, video for you. More of an opinion, I suppose. Mm, we're going to per personal experience. We're going to impart a little bit of knowledge about some of the cleaning stuff that we've used over the years for guns. Not only cleaning, but primarily in this video, what we're focusing on is uh, mainly corrosion resistance. Uh, that's one of the big problems. You know, we are in the southeast here. It's a very humid environment. Uh, there's a lot of uh, you know high moisture in the air, which can really lend itself to flash rusting in a absolute hurry. <laughs> Georgia if, summers are brutal, boy. Yes, yes, very humid here. And uh, plus, the, your body chemistry can have a lot to do with how much rust can develop on a given gun. Uh, I have very acidic sweat, <laughs> so any blued surface that I touch, if it's not immediately uh, oiled well and wiped down immediately to get all those fingerprints off, it will uh, turn into a, thro a fro frothing cesspool of red rust. <laughs> Pretty much it's in a pile of red dust by it's the a, next yeah, day. Yeah, a pile of red dust by the end of the He's day. He's got that so, ginger sweat. Um, so a few things that we want to talk about in this video are some of the products that we've used uh, very much over the years. Mm -hmm. And we're going to talk about some of our favorite products, why we use them, and uh, where some of these products excel. And you're probably asking yourself, well, why not just stick to one product that can do everything? Well, there's not really one product that can truly do everything. Some of these products lend themselves very well to some very specific tasks around the gun shop, mm -hmm. and uh, we're going to kind of talk about that a little bit. So um, beyond cor corrosion resistance, which is from like here over, Chad's got some stuff down here. We're going to talk about we're going to talk about things that prevent rust and things that lube moving parts mm -hmm. in terms of metal parts. So uh, I guess let's just kind of. Let's do this. So it's How not so we mundane. From, we'll bounce around back and forth a little bit. Either that or we can go from what we've used for the longest and move our way. Okay. In. All right, so. I'm game. I think that we've probably used strike hold as long as we've known each other, which is like 18 years. Yeah. Ever since we started shooting, I bought a case of strike hold and I just can't say enough good things about this stuff. Yeah, yeah. We use it for everything. It's got good cleaning properties, good lubricating properties, good corrosion resistance, uh, and it's also got a very, very uh, high or you know a very good dielectric quality. I can't tell you how many times we've had problems with the electronics and stuff, or like loose wires, things like that, on the tractor, and put things back together, and something shorten out. You spray that in there, good to go. Yep. I've sprayed that on radio circuit boards and stuff before, and they're like brand new. I lubricate you know? all of my fishing equipment. With uh, strike hole, they also offer this product in a, what they call a marine strike mm, hole. Oh yeah. Honestly, I've never really seen much of a difference between the two. They're both awesome. Strike hole's excellent, and it doesn't really leave a greasy or slimy, nasty kind of film on the metal. It kind of dries out mm. once it's gone, but it's still there. Like it, it, it its corrosion resistance properties are excellent. Um, the entire time that I was overseas uh, in Iraq. I kept my Ma Deuce uh, lubed up with copious amounts of strike hold. Copious amounts. Copious amounts of strike hold. And also the exterior surfaces mm -hmm. of the Ma Deuce I kept wiped down with strike hold. And dust wouldn't stick to it. Mm -hmm. I could just wipe dust off with a cloth. It really does a great job. There was a time that my, my old pickup, I used to drive like an early 80s S10 pickup truck, and I sprayed this in the fuse box because I was having all kinds of weird electronics issues. Things were going crazy. Sprayed that in the fuse box, done. Strike hold's excellent. I mean, one one, uh, one detriment that I will say, it is a little bit uh, expensive. It's okay? expensive and it stinks. It, it does smell horrible. It's expensive, but it does an excellent job. And it is a good all-around cleaner, protectant, mm -hmm. lubricating. Its lubricating properties, I'll say, probably aren't its strong point. Mm -hmm. Where strike hold is really going to go well is if you're messing around with circuit boards mm -hmm. and things that are electronic. You're messing around with uh, things that need to be well protected and corrosion free later. Mm -hmm. Its corrosion uh, resistance properties are certainly excellent, but it's it's not really the end all do all product though. It's um, like a kind of like a high quality CLP. I would say part. so, or a high quality yeah. WD forty really in Pretty a way. Much, so in a sense. And yes, uh, we've used WD forty a lot on on <laughs> guns over the years. I know his dad believes in it big time. It's funny every time we're at the farm or whatever. And and we're you know done shooting or whatever. He always says, "Y'all should waste a lot of ammo. You gonna clean them guns up with some WD forty? Yeah, like, spray WD forty. Like, I'll just spray it on them, put it back in the closet. You good? Yeah. No. <laughs> All right. Well, I have to say, probably Ballastol would be a, yeah. a, a close second. Um, Ballastol is an excellent product. One of the interesting things about Ballastol uh, is that it's a product that's been around since around World War One. Uh, the Germans developed the formula for Ballastol back around World War I, if I'm not mistaken. And it's been in use for about that long. It works great for conditioning leather, for wiping down your wood, 
uh, wiping down metal, really anything at all, it does a great job and it emulsifies beautifully <clears throat> in water. It does. So if you want to cut this with uh, some hot water, it makes a great cutting agent. You can make a use it as a baseline cutting fluid if you need to. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also use it to clean up. It is great for cleaning up black powder. Mm -hmm. So you take a little bit of hot water, mix it with some ballastol, gets this kind of almost milky looking yep. consistency. It looks it, like milk. It's, it seems like it like pulls the black powder off the metal and just kind of like it does just sucks it, it in. Does. You know, so it's really cool. Ballastol is excellent. I would say that its corrosion resistance properties are decent. I wouldn't say that, that it's on top of the list. Now, don't take our word on corrosion resistance. There are many things out there. There are many technical studies that have been performed on the, the technical corrosion resistance of all of the products that are on this table. Uh, Ballastol is definitely a good one. Um, I, I would say that where I uh, regulate this for use now, pretty much for black powder mm -hmm. cleanup with hot water. Uh, uh, probably one of the other oils that we've used the longest is Cano Croil, and this stuff has been around forever. Forever! Makes me think of the Sandlot. Forever! Yeah, yeah. Alright, I've used this stuff from everything, um, or for everything from cleaning up uh, my match grade like 22 barrel, just cleaning barrels in general, um, lubricating small parts, getting small screws and other parts like unstuck. This stuff is an excellent penetrating oil, and uh, Croil actually sees the majority of its use, actually, or previously at least, um, before it was really popular in the firearms realm, was in like industrial machinery. I mean, my, uh, my uncle actually used to work for a, a company that made paper products, and they ran very large paper presses and such, and cutting machines and all, and he kept cans of this stuff in aerosol form around, and literally, if something was going wrong with the machine, you spray this in there, and then it's golden. That's right. I mean, but uh, as a <laughs> as a lubricating oil, not, not so, so much. much. As a as a rust pre preventative, yeah, maybe no. marginal, just a, maybe as much as a very, CLP. Very very poor rust preventative but, quality. But as a penetrating oil, the stuff is excellent. Yeah, uh, I pretty much mirror everything that Chad said. Uh, Croil, uh, primarily where I find use with Croil, I always keep a can of this stuff laying around. In fact, a little goes a long way. You can tell by the condition of this can that we've had this laying around a while. Uh, Croil is excellent for getting stuck screws loose. Like mm. when I'm cleaning up an old gun, and let's just say that there's a, a stubborn screw that's not wanting to move because it's got you know a pound of yak grease under it or something, <laughs> then this is great to be able to take a torch and kind of heat it up mm -hmm. a little bit, drop some croil on there, it creeps in mm -hmm. there, Let's see and it. it will unstick any screw that's stuck you can possibly think of. Another thing that I've used croil for quite a bit lately is getting like my monocore suppressors unstuck you know, from the tube. Yep. Some of the mono cores, they get filled up with lead, especially on the 22 cans. You just soak some cruel in there and then you can actually kind of get the things apart at least enough to, to work with them. Absolutely. But uh, it's been working really good for that purpose too. All so. right, so moving down the line, I would have to say the LPS products probably uh, are next in line in terms of what I personally have mm -hmm. the most experience with. Now what's in my hand here is a can of LPS3. Uh, basically you have, it's a greaseless lubricant that has basically progressive amounts of staying power based mm -hmm. on the number. Okay, so three being uh, definitely on the long-term storage side. They have a product called LPS-1, LPS-2, mm -hmm. and LPS-3. LPS-1 is more of a, hey, general purpose cleaning. Mm -hmm. It's corrosion resistance properties I found probably leave just a slight amount to be desired. Mm -hmm. It's great for cleaning. It's great for busting apart stuck stuff. It, it creeps a lot. LPS-1 can really get into some of those, those deep down kind of areas you need to get into and clean. LPS-1 makes an excellent oil bath. If you want to run an ultrasonic with oil and really get that oil to creep down in every little crack and crevice in an ultrasonic, you can do that. LPS-2 is kind of my go-to when yeah. it comes to LPS products. It's great for cleaning. It's great for uh, lubricating. It, it, it is tacky enough to be used as a lubricant. And if it dries out, it's not like it's going to leave some film or nasty gunk on the inside of the gun. And uh, LPS-2 is probably one of the best general purpose lubricants and cleaners that they make. Yep, um, for sure. LPS has gotten their start mainly as a uh, aerospace and, and uh, aviation company. You know, mm -hmm. they, they sell a lot of this stuff to like, you know, all the mechanics that work on planes and yeah, stuff like that. You, you talk to anybody who works like for Delta or pretty much any airline that works in like the mechanical field, they know the name LPS because they well, say, oh man, we use that stuff all the time. The gun industry basically kind of picked up on this because mm -hmm. a lot of uh, mechanics bring it home from work and using it on their guns and finding out that it works quite well for mm -hmm. firearms. LPS-3 is more of a long-term uh, storage type thing. So if I'm going to store a gun on the wall back here for a really long time, 
I can wipe it down with LPS3, mm -hmm. spray it on there, and it'll leave kind of a waxy film, mm -hmm. uh, it, which we're going to talk about that in a minute. Well, and that stuff will actually work good on like stocks and all too, so it yep. works as a good metal and a wood protectant. It just leaves that film on there, and you know, if you need to, you can use either one of the other LPS products to get it off in the future, but it's got a very, very good storage um, you know, bear, property Bear in mind, it. if you're going to use three, you do have to remove the oh, three yeah. from the gun before you, you shoot. That's the only bad thing. It leaves literally like a waxy-like surface mm -hmm. on the gun that needs to be removed. Um, I would say the next one in line over the LPS products would be uh, Break Free. Um, this is a product that is issued to the military in quite uh, large numbers. Well, you've probably been using that longer than the LPS, I'd say. Uh, yeah, I so. mean, there, there's not very many, uh, you know, armories or, or gun guys, or, or especially if you're an infantry guy in the Marine Corps or the Army or anything like that, you know the name Break Free and you know CLP. Unless you've never cleaned your gun. No, they clean the guns, <laughs> trust me. So, yeah, the thing is, CLP is a, is a great all-purpose uh, this whole CLP thing, cleaner, lubricant, preservative. Okay, oh, so it's, protectant, it, preservative. it's or protectant, and it's meant to be a end-all, do-all type thing. If a machine gun's out on the range running and it stops running, spray this in it and it runs. Okay, if a machine gun's dirty and you need to clean it, spray this on it, wipe it down, clean it. Uh, if the machine gun's rusting, spray this on it, wipe it down, it won't rust anymore. That is what <laughs> this product is supposed to, and it does that quite well. Now, I'm not going to get into the technicalities of what makes uh, Break Free a good product or what makes CLP a good product. We I've just always don't been know. We're told, not I've always been told that there's a bit of a Teflon base to it. That's what I've kind of heard. And it has... Uh, it, it basically imparts the same type of conditioning to the metal that a Teflon coating would, would impart, and it, it creates a physical separation of moisture to the metal, okay? And basically any oil, essentially that's what it's trying to do, is create a barrier where the moisture cannot get to the rust and, or to the uh, metal and cause some form of corrosion. Mm -hmm. uh, CLP is excellent. Break Free is a great product. I've been using it uh, quite a bit. I find that the way I tend to use it is I take like a tray or something and I just empty a bunch of it down in a tray and then put the parts in there and just scrub them down. It's great for that. So if you're going to use CLP like this, the Break Free product, you probably want to order like the big gallon jugs mm -hmm. of it and use it like that. That's how I tend to use it. Yeah, a convenient way is always aerosol. I mean... There's another product that I just thought about that we have used quite a bit, but we just don't have any right here because we've used it all up is rim oil. Yeah, yeah. And then also like when, when you're talking about like protecting like FP10, yeah. you know, those are two products that we've used forever. Yep. Forever. Well, I'll tell you what, in, <laughs> in terms of corrosion <laughs> resistance, rim oil is excellent. Mm -hmm. I don't have a can here to show you guys, but you guys know what rim oil looks yeah. like. It's a yellow and green can. It's a Remington product. You've probably seen it, hearing about all mm -hmm. the time. Uh, that would probably be next in line as rim oil because I can't tell you how many gallons of that crap I've gone through. And it's an excellent uh, rust inhibitor. I mean, you if you treat your guns with uh, rim oil and wipe them down really well, even if you're in a humid environment, it will do a pretty solid job of keeping your guns from rusting. Certainly will, for sure. Um, so moving down the line, I think we've talked about some corrosion uh, resistance and things like that. I do have a few products here that we're going to talk a little bit about. This is Brownells uh, Rust Preventative Number 2. It's one of the formulas that they offer. I haven't used a ton of it, but I will say... This stuff is, um, they also make a product called Hold, mm -hmm. yeah. and I don't know if you're familiar with Hold, <laughs> but let's say that you're running a parkerizing bath or something like that, and you do a bunch of prep, and you bee blast a bunch of stuff, and you need to like, literally keep it from rusting. Mm -hmm. They have a product called Hold, <laughs> stuff and is it, awesome. it won't rust, okay? I, I don't know how it works. It's like magic. It is absolutely insane, but Brownells and their rust preventative stuff, although a little more permanent in terms of the way it's marketed to, mm. for its use, it is excellent stuff. Any of their rust preventatives are great. They are a little bit on the pricey side, but a little goes a long way. And if you need to keep your stuff from rusting, I haven't really used any of this for cleaning. This is more of a, hey, i got to store something a long time, and I grab a rag, spray this on it, and wipe it down. Also, you know, the rust, pre rust preventatives that Brownells offers, too, are they're, a lot of this geared more toward, like, gunsmiths who are working on guns, and they've got something that's in process, yeah. okay? And they just put that on there and put it in the corner, Correct. work on something else, waiting on parts, and then they know it's going to be in the same condition that it was when they left it. So All right, that's one so of the biggest things. Moving on, we, we do have some actual lubricants, which the, these more or less are kind of geared towards lubricating. We're going to get into that in a moment. These mm -hmm. are more like rust prevention. Here's a little product that this is, I, I'm kind of mixed feelings about this stuff. And <laughs> uh, Ezox, okay, I, I've done a lot of research into selecting 
oils for rust prevention and things like that and for selecting products that I feel can kind of be a one trick pony and everything like mm -hmm. that. Warren Custom Outdoors puts this stuff out. Now I'm not going to lie, this stuff is obscenely expensive. I ordered two cans of it, it was like almost $40 for two cans. It was like a $20 can of lubricant. But the way this stuff works is really, really crazy. Um, I've been using it a good bit here lately, especially. Um, the way it sprays is really cool. I point so that thing it, some more safe. Yeah, now. it gives it gives kind of a kind of a nice light. See that kind of a film that it imparts instead of a stream. Mm -hmm. I can't see it. Put, point it this way. Point it this way, real quick. Ah! <laughs> but you know, it's it's got a decent odor. It doesn't stink Something. or anything like that. Yeah, it actually and it, is pretty pleasant. It, it goes on kind of somewhat greasy, and the whole idea is that you let it sit for a second, mm -hmm. and it kind of flashes off a little bit and leaves behind this just very very faint film. And the thing is, it's mm. awesome on wood, it's awesome on metal, it's great for treating your bore and everything like that, and it's good for after resting or after resting in like military surplus guns where you have problems with uh, corrosive ammo. Even after you've cleaned up really well, mm -hmm. having problems with after resting, I found that this uh, stuff works great. It's great for cleaning up like powder. Mm -hmm. Um, although cost prohibitive, mm. it is a little bit on the expensive side. It's kind of like the LPS products, you know, I mean, most of those, the cans are about 17 bucks a piece. Strike hold is relatively expensive, but I've never used this before, but it says from one product gun care system from 450 degrees Fahrenheit to 95 below zero. Right. Holy Let me cow. tell you something about this stuff. Check though. that out. This Ezox came highly recommended. I was looking at a couple of different studies online of uh, how a lot of these products stacked up in the way of we're talking scientific studies of corrosion resistance where they take raw metal and they, you know, do it like that. They, they treat the metal, wipe it down, degrease it, and then they have little segments that are like, all right, this is this, this is that. You know, mm -hmm. they do a controlled testing. And Ezox actually came up in like the top three. Cool. In multiple studies. So, I, so far, I'm very impressed with this stuff. I wish it was a little cheaper. Yeah. But cost-wise, this is the newest out of all these products in terms of what I've been using. Mm -hmm. And based on everything that you see here, um, this is definitely becoming a go-to for me. Although it's not going to replace all of my other, uh, you know, oils, but it's definitely here to stay. I'm going to keep a jar of that stuff laying around. And when we're talking about like lubricating firearms, I and mean, we've used a ton of different oils over the years, we always have like little samples and stuff laying around that we try out. And haven't tried know, it as a lubricant, yeah, by the way. But for the most part, like I get into conversations with people, and I'm like, you know, I mean, my experience has been pretty much oils, oil you know, in the big scheme of things, but there's more to it than that. And having some conversations with folks in the industry, you know, just varying companies and such, and just what they're putting out, um, it, it, it's some pretty interesting things. But like I mentioned, I've been using FP10 forever. And yep. I used to buy that stuff from, you know, Brownells or Midway, wherever, I mean, find it at local shops. I mean, I use it on everything, you know, um, you know, AR-10 or uh, AR-15 bolts, okay, you get done cleaning, put a few drops on the inside of the, the upper receiver, close the bolt, put a few drops on the bolt, it's phosphated, done. it spreads out, it's good. I mean, you're good to go. Um, I've been using that probably the longest. I don't have any here to show you, but that's the oldest product that we've been using. But recently, I've been using a few other odds and ends, like we've got this Breakthrough uh, Battleborn High Purity Oil, and one of the neat things about this is it's crystal clear. Okay, and a lot of the oils nowadays are going toward like the non-toxicity side of things and like non-staining because, you know, when you're cleaning your guns or whatever, you don't want oil staining your clothes or staining your hands or being... Or being unsafe to touch. Unsafe to touch. I mean, you know, chemicals in this stuff, I mean, you know, let's face it, cancer is a big concern nowadays and a lot of people think that, you know, there's chemicals in pretty much everything around us and everything causes cancer and I mean, that could be the case, but, you know, one less thing to worry about, okay? So that's been really good. I've been using this on just random guns, just dropping it in like ARs and stuff that aren't really running all that great because frankly, I don't clean guns that much anymore unless they need it. I mean, I shoot guns until they literally stop working, you know, unless I really just need to do some PM on them. But like most of my guns now, I shoot suppressed and they do get They get dirty. filthy. They get so nasty, it's not even funny. But a little bit of oil goes a long way in keeping those guns running. But I, I like that because it doesn't stain. Um, another one that we've been using a lot lately has just been this Geisley Go Juice. Uh, they just released this stuff earlier this year at SHOT and uh, Bill was funny, he's just, he's throwing out little samples of it like candy. It's like, Go Juice! Here. You know, I tell you what, I, you know, at first 
I, I should have known better than to doubt Bill, <laughs> you know, because I remember at SHOT Show, we went in this elaborate discussion about what made this stuff so awesome, <laughs> and I'm not even going to try to claim to tell you I've why got this on, stuff is so awesome. I've got it on video, and you guys can watch it on YouTube, but it's, yeah. <laughs> it's pretty awesome, I mean, just the science behind it, but yep. non-toxic, and it's... You know, it stays in place, and I tell you, we Got use this. Got a wide temperature range. It, it does. Runs in. We use this stuff at Range Day quite a bit. Uh, I had a uh, twelve and a half inch three hundred blackout SBR that we had set up in front of the Freedom Munitions booth, and they were running mag after mag after mag of their new uh, two hundred twenty grain hush out of it. And that also thing, filthy. That, that thing would slack up every now and again, and I'd be like, just shoot some go juice in there. Squirt, so squirt. I put a I put a tube of that on the table, and uh, the guy over at Freedom just went up there and squirted it in a few times, and was like, rack the bolt. It went for the rest of the day. Yep. Yeah, you know, and that thing probably had a thousand plus rounds through it just in one day. Just people trying it out ten, 10 rounds at a time. You know, working good though. Working great. Uh, the Rand CLP is one of those newer products too that we've had a little bit of experience with. I and, clean with it. And you know, Eric's been using it more than me, but this is a nano infused cleaner. So the whole thing with like nano infused products is the the particulates in the actual cleaner and the oil and such are very very tiny. You know, like microscopic. Allows them to get under and lift things off the exactly. metal. Exactly. And also it allows it to penetrate into finer parts of the metal, whereas a conventional oil with larger particles doesn't really have the access. And you know, it also prevents in. moisture from getting into some of those really, really, really microscopically tiny crevices. This is all of our layman redneck science. It is speak, redneck so. science, but th there is some real science behind it, and um, it's awesome stuff. You know, and a lot of times in man cans, we've given out some of the samples mm -hmm. for the RAN CLP, and uh, a lot of folks like it. Mm -hmm. um, another product that we've used quite a bit has been FireClean. And FireClean has, <laughs> it has been in the gun news uh, for quite some time, and there's been a lot of controversy about it and whatnot, but, you know, frankly, it works. I don't really care. You know, if, you know, if it's one molecule away from being Crisco or whatever, I don't care. It works. I mean, I've put this stuff and on... Especially if it's safe. I've put this stuff on suppressed bolt groups, and they run and run and run and run. The guys who are at FireClean have machine guns and, and belt feds that they've run with this stuff on there. It's like tens of thousands of rounds, and it just keeps working. Yep. Guess what? I mean, it works. If, but if you've got an AR or something that's dry and crusty, man, you squirt some that fire clean in there, stuff works great. One thing that was recommended to me, actually, I, I meant to talk about this earlier, but f a few of the products that we've had on the table have been recommended to me as being pretty good to use in suppressors, not only as like an ablative material, like basically making the suppressor wet so it makes it more quiet, but um, also to help lubricate like uh, the, the core of the suppressor, either the K-baffles or like a mono core to keep the carbon build up down. Makes it easier to disassemble. I will say that I tried fire clean on a couple of my mono core suppressors and it smoked and smoked and smoked and smoked. And I just put a very minimal amount on there and wiped it in and yep. just kind of wiped off a little bit of the excess, but it still smoked like crazy. And I wasn't really quite satisfied with that purpose. Um, rim oil, I've been told, is a good ablative material, but it smokes like crazy too. It does quiet the can down, but it, it nothing's really better than water. But water I, I will or mention, that line pulling fluid seems to do yeah, okay, but I, it smokes too, doesn't no, it? No, actually, the line pulling gel doesn't smoke. I picked up some of the synthetic line pulling lubricant from like Home Depot. You get it in just a big, big jar, basically, or whatever, big, big bottle, and it's just got a squirt nozzle on it. And basically, what it's used for is pulling wires and cables through um, like conduit and such. Yeah, it lubricates it to make the wire easier to pull out. Yeah, so One thing on this up. fire clean I will mention too, uh, before we move on to that, is yeah, that uh, this stuff, it, a little of this stuff goes a long way. You do I've, not want to overload your gun with this stuff. I've too. had that bottle probably a year and a half, and I mean, I use it pretty much on most of my suppressed guns, which is pretty much all of my suppressed guns, all of my guns, I should say. Yep. But every time I actually do some PM or uh, just routine cleaning, yep. I do coat that bolt back down with that. And then I use just other oils and such just to kind of keep it running over the course of time. On that line pulling gel, what about uh, pulling your suppressors apart? Does it help with that? Not really, not really. It, it just mainly works as an ablative material, but it stays in there longer than water. And what so, he means by that, when he's discussing that material, he's referring to basically, when you run the cam wet or when you run a little bit of water, it's supposed to cool those initial gases mm -hmm a lot quicker and give you more of a sound attenuation a sound attenuation mm -hmm. early on and then the cam will kind of settle in and mm -hmm. and everything it like that. It works really good with like 45 ACP suppressors. I mean like my Griffin can, I ran it you know, dry and then you run it wet and it's a noticeable difference. All right, but so those anyways. are firearms lubricants. Okay, we went, went over uh, corrosion resistance, cleaning, 
and then maybe a little bit of uh, lubricating properties, mm -hmm. but then straight on lubricating properties. All right, now and what about stuff where you want to lubricate things where oil doesn't stay or where you wouldn't use a traditional gun oil for lubricating parts? Well, there's a lot of like gun greases that are out there, but we've stuck with a few products over the years. And these, oh, yeah. are, these are all just our personal preferences. This is the stuff that we've used, mm -hmm. you know, we're not scientists. We don't know all the technical. You but know, we do shoot jumbo, a lot. But we shoot a lot. We, and we get guns dirty. You know, like I said, for the most part, if you need to get a gun running again, oil's oil. To some degree. Things, to some degree. This is just our opinion. But as far as like non critical, like operational parts, all right, so like trigger groups, okay? You've got, say, a two stage match trigger or whatever in your AR, or uh, you've got just a regular old standard trigger. Molybdenum. Molly slide. And that crap will go forever. That's the only tube you'll ever need. A little goes a really long way with Molly. I bought two of these about 12 years ago. I haven't even opened the second one. This is still the first one. And uh, it, this is a, like a very, you know, <laughs> it's a very like pasty substance. It's like toothpaste. But, you know, like when you talk about Molly coating bullets to make them slide down the bore easier and reloading and you get higher velocities and you don't get as much fouling on your, uh, on your barrel uh, surfaces, it's because the Molly is actually impregnating those bigger pores and surfaces of the, the projectile and it's smoothing it out. It's almost making like a literal glass-like surface. So Molly, you can put it between like the, the sear and hammer on like your AR and like your disconnector surfaces and such, anything that's polished. And what this does is it just makes it super slick. It's like somebody took that thing and they honed it, you know, or they gave it to some little elves or something to hone with their tiny little hands, you know. Well, that, I mean, that's more a or less. really interesting way to look at it. I never thought about it like that, you know. You know. Uh, it also decreases wear. I mean, that's a good... Any, anytime you've got a lubricant like this that kind of stays, like Molly, uh, Molly Slide or something, is that Molly the whole point is those, those parts are moving against each other intermittently and working against each mm -hmm. other and... It is to prevent the wear and tear of those components and mm -hmm. to prevent galling and to prevent wear. So definitely awesome there. But Molly is recommended in a lot of like match grade triggers and such. I mean, sure. uh, the first two stage trigger I ever bought was a Rock River adjustable. I've and run a lot of this Molly in a few Glocks before yep, too. The Glock works great. It yep. works really, really good on the slide engagement surfaces. Yep. You know, uh, sure does. just slicks everything up. But anti seize. Really any anti seize will do. We've used a bunch of it over the years, but this works great on threaded surfaces that um, say, okay, you're, you're installing a barrel nut on an AR. Well, you put a little bit of anti-seize on there, and if you ever want to change that rail, uh, it's going to be easier to get off. Anti-seize actually kind of fills those voids and whatnot between the threaded surfaces yep. and keeps crap out. So it keeps um, dirt debris. Glock actually uses a copper anti-seize as a factory lubricant. Mm -hmm. Anytime you pull apart a brand new Glock, you'll see that kind of coppery looking mm -hmm. substance uh, that's actually a copper-based uh, anti-seize medium. Mm -hmm. Uh, there are a lot of different types of anti seize and one of the things you want to really uh, look out for is, you know, a lot of old timers will use like white lithium grease to like lube up their guns. That, gets that is up. not what, it, what that's intended for. It'll dry out and it'll gum smoke. up and it'll smoke. You don't really want to do that. You want to stick to something that's a copper based anti seize. If you're going to mm -hmm. use an anti seize, you can lubricate your firearms with anti seize. You can use anti seize to lubricate trigger mm -hmm. engagement surfaces you if you wish. Can. Slide rails, like on an AK, sometimes I'll take some anti seize and just slide there a bit mm -hmm. on the rails on the inside of the receiver for that bolt to really get just buttery smooth in yep. there. Where I found anti seize to work really well, um, Molly is kind of messy. I mean, it gets on your hands and it stays there, but anti-seize is not not quite so much, but I find this to work really well on like my suppressed 9mm SBR. It's just a blowback, but I put a little bit of this on top of the hammer and it really helps smooth out that, yep. that ramp on the bolt carrier. Um, but this stuff is great and it does have a mild corrosion resistance to it too. Sure. So that anti-seize is just something we use for specific purposes over the years. And again, guys, this, a little of this stuff goes a long mm -hmm. way. A tube like this will last you a year or better. And then Luber plate. Luber plate has been around forever. Yep. Forever. Last but not least. Last but not least. But Luber plate is what's recommended for actions such as like the M1 Garand, the M1A, anything with like a roller cam uh, style bolt unlocking uh, mechanism with an op rod and such. They recommend Luber plate to be used on those engagement surfaces to prevent galling between those components. You and can almost think along the lines of like military LSA, mm -hmm. uh, which was kind of an old standard for basically Luber plate, more or less. Kind of a slightly more vis viscous. Is that a word? Viscous. 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 Viscosity. Yes. A slightly more viscous uh, version of basically Luber mm -hmm. plate. 
This is great for your reloading presses, mm -hmm. uh, for lubricating things on presses, machinery, uh, you name it. It's great. One thing I've tried this for, and it does not work very well, is uh, for you guys who play with suppressors, um, on pistol cans you have the booster piston assembly or the Nielsen device, okay, or the ASAP device, depends on which manufacturer it is. But mm -hmm. the the basically the uh, piston slides inside of a spring-loaded component every time you fire the gun. I tried lube plate for that, and it gums up big time. It is not the best thing for that. Working on uh, this works great on my M1A and yeah, like yeah. Ares M1 Grands and such on those engagement surfaces, but on a tight fitting surface with like an o-ring engagement such as like the Nielsen device it does not work very well you'd be better suited with like um, one thing I don't even have here is something I've used all the time is Dow 33 I've got a tube of paintball shocker lube that I've had forever and I use that on all of my suppressors like any kind of sort of o-ring engagement it helps lubricate and it just keeps those parts sliding nice and clean. Yeah, it keeps that so. o-ring from really like getting dry rotted yep. and falling apart or, or getting too much heat to it. Um, Luper plate, I would not recommend for something where you've got expanding gases yep. coming into direct contact with the Luper plate. I don't That's think it can hold much, the heat. It doesn't. So. It's not really a heat kind of thing. So this is great when the moving components in question are not going to come in contact with any gases that are expanding uh, around the gun or in the gun. Trigger mechs, you could probably run Luber plate, mm -hmm. no problem, not a big deal. The only uh, other detriment to Luber plate, um, although it is recommended for those external surfaces like that, uh, is it will pick up dust and debris. Yep. And it's just like any other like heavy grease. Yep. I mean, if, Molly will too. Molly will too. But that's just kind of, nah, it's just par for the course. That's what so. you get. You but know. anyways. That's pretty much it in a nutshell. These are the products that we tend to gravitate to on a regular basis. Hopefully, uh, you guys glean some information, maybe learn something. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe we kept you from making some mistakes. Maybe some of these products weren't for you. And maybe mm -hmm. now you know and you won't have to buy that product. So as we went through all the hard work for you. So yeah. <laughs> Mess, messed a few things up, got some guns stuck together. And, oh, yeah. You know. oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, though. I mean, it's, it's really hard to put my finger on one exact product that I would stick to. They all have their own little specific uses and everything. I, I wouldn't necessarily say that I would want to be without any of these because they all have uh, kind of a little specific niche that they kind well, of fall into. I'll say that my range bag, I keep Shocker Lube, Dow 33. I keep anti seize in there. I keep some LPS2 in there all the time. And then lately I've been keeping the Breakthrough Clean, the Geisley Go Juice, and then I keep some Fire Clean in there pretty much all the time. Um, this, you know, the LPS product works great for cleaning, whatever I need to do. Uh, a couple of different types of oil, you know, the Fire Clean for whatever I need. I mean, general CLP, whatever. But this is pretty much what I keep in my range bag all the time. Yep. And this because I, I mean I'm always messing with suppressors and I always find myself needing a little bit of anti seize because I'm changing uh, modules or adapters this that and the other and I always put anti seize on there because those carbon deposits get in there and they make it so difficult to get those things apart sometimes. I would say um, for for my my opinion and my use, range take to the range, mm -hmm. good overall kind of whatever. Mm -hmm. Back in the rear and cleaning gear, mm -hmm. black powder. Everything else. Everything else. And whatever uses you might find mm -hmm. there. So hopefully you guys gleaned some information from this video. We appreciate you watching. Uh, we try to put together content that we feel is pertinent to you guys and that can help people in their everyday lives as a gun owner. Uh, so thank you very much for watching today's video. We have many more on the way. Uh, we have a series called Gun Gripes, if you guys might want to check it out. Obviously, we do make more firearms facts videos from time to time. Uh, we do reloading videos, gunsmithing videos, gun reviews. Uh, we have kind of a wild torture test thing we do on a regular basis called Meltdowns, Meltdowns. where we take a uh, gun and we shoot it full auto until it fails. So make sure you check out some of our other content. Uh, thank you for watching today's video, and we'll catch you next time. Take care, guys.